Hi there, folks. Thank you for coming to this session today. Uh, good afternoon to those of you that are in Singapore and uh, good morning uh, to any of you who are joining from closer to where I am, which is Glasgow in Scotland. If you are catching up with me on the uh, on the streams later in the day, then um, I hope it is a very lovely whatever time of day um, it is that you're having. Um, I can see the live broadcast uh, from here, but I can't see who's in the room. So um, hi to anyone who's in the room. Uh, so let me do this. OK, so hi, I'm Sarah Thomas from Wikimedia UK and I'm a programme manager with responsibility for programmes work in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and volunteering right across the UK. Um, from January 2018 to December of 2022, I was Scotland programme coordinator uh, and before that I was a Wikimedian in residence for the Scottish Library and Information Council and also for Museums Galleries Scotland, both of which are sector development agencies. Over the years, um, I've done a lot of training for new editors. I've developed GLAM and education partnerships. I've done advocacy work around open licensing and worked with a lot of individual volunteers. Out with Wiki, I do uh, event, events and volunteer management, um, and I also run a small charity. Uh, I just say my uh, email address and my username are there uh, just for anyone who wants to follow up with me uh, later. Uh, the tiny URL um, that is on the screen um, will take you to an etherpad for this session. Um, inside you'll find links to all of the session slides and also to blank and example copies of the workbooks that um, I'm going to use um, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, throughout the course um, of the, this session. There will be time set aside within this session for you to, to take some of those tools and have a go with them. I said they're just very basic frameworks. Um, but if you want to go into that etherpad just now to download those links, particularly the one that is worksheet one or workbook one um, and make notes as you go along, you are very welcome to do that. This is intended to be a session um, where you, you go away at the end of it um, to, to, to have something um, of your own. So um, as I said, if you'd like to go in there, look at workbook one, download a copy of that um, or make a copy if you're in G Drive, hopefully that all works. I'm going to leave this, uh, the tiny URL will be on the screen for the next few slides, uh, just so hopefully everybody can get access to that. What I'm going to do today is split into two sections. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to talk through some of the iterations of Wikimedia UK's Train the Trainer programme, in which I've been involved since 2019. Um, I'm going to talk about how we put them together, uh, what we wanted to achieve with each of them, and how we built on and amended the programme year on year to respond to community need um, and the need of the chapter. I'm also going to introduce, as I've kind of said a little bit, uh, going to introduce a fairly simple planning tool that I've developed to help with designing and planning a train the trainer programme. And the idea is then that we'll spend some time with your own examples using this tool. And by the end of the workshop, you'll have not the whole thing. Um, an hour is not a very long time, not the whole thing, um, but at least a start um, in order that you can see how you could implement a train the trainer program in your own chapter um, and what you'll need to do to get this started. Um, there, as I said, there is time built in for you to fill in your own copies, uh, but if you'd like to, again, download those from the etherpad, um, have them open, make notes as you go along. Um, there is also a se section on that etherpad for any questions. Um, if I don't get time within this section uh, session uh, to answer any of those questions, then I will keep that open for the rest of today um, and try and type answers there. Or again, anybody wants to contact me uh, by email, um, absolutely please do do that. So this tool that I'm going to be using um, is basically a framework that I came up with while I was preparing for this session uh, by going through in quite a lot of detail the different train the trainer iterations that I've been involved with and thinking about how it fits into the wider work of the chapter, how we've approached and developed community support for the chapter, so how we've de developed our support for volunteers. So with the help of a whole lot of scribbles on a whiteboard, uh, as you can see here, um, I've kind of reversed engineered something um, that I hoped would work for those um, at the beginning of the process. 
Now, whilst so whilst I didn't design those initial train the trainer sessions uh, using the tool, I have basically retrofitted it on top of the last four and a half years of work. Um, I did want to test that it works. So um, this is what you should see. The one on the uh, left of the screen there um, will be what you'll see in the blank copy. The ones on the right hand side um, are ones that I've filled in. Basically, I, I found my, my 2023 iteration, fed all that information in um, to test that it works. Um, and I've found a few things that I hadn't thought of. So I'm, I'm hopefully I'm quite hopeful uh, that this that this will work. And um, I said these examples are all available on that etherpad. The reason that I wanted to do this in this way or to try and develop this tool um, is that in all of the years I've been involved with Wiki, one of my kind of key pieces of learning has been that all of our chapters, all of our, our affiliated groups, while we are uh, we share some common features, we're all really very different in terms of size and in resources available to us and also in terms of the brilliant communities that we serve. So the needs of your chapter might not be the same as the needs um, of my chapter. What works for us might not necessarily work for you. Um, but I'm hoping to share today some things um, that I hope I hope will be useful to you. Um, but first, a little bit of background. Um, Wikimedia UK have been running Train the Trainer for around about 10 years. Um, Train the Trainer is a series of ongoing workshops that are run by Wikimedia UK with the aim of giving volunteers the ability to teach others how to contribute to the Wikimedia project. Wikimedia UK's trainers are there to provide training for others and they lead many training events across the UK. We have about 50 active trainers in the UK, plus another eight or nine who are now resident in other countries. Our programme aims to equip our volunteers with the skills, the confidence and the knowledge in order that they can lead training sessions for different groups of people, both in person and online. Some of these opportunities come through Wikimedia UK. Some of them are through leads or partnerships, which the trainers develop themselves. In terms of support and feedback, we do an annual survey of volunteers and lead contacts at partner organisations. This is called the Community Leaders Survey. And we also now have a Slack channel for trainers, a mailing list, a programme of additional top up training and twice yearly meetings and peer learning sessions. For the last year, we've had a part time member of staff as a volunteer coordinator. We've actually just changed that role title and um, it's now called the Outreach and Community Coordinator. So what I'm going to do now is lead through a few examples of the kinds of courses that we've run over the last few years. Um, and I'm going to focus really on how we designed and ran these courses according to the following things, to the need that we were uh, addressing and to the benefit that we hoped we would get, um, to the resource that was available and the framework into which we could fit this course in terms of community support and community development, the risks that might be inherent in, uh, in any event uh, or any process um, and what we could do to mitigate that, and the lessons that we could learn from other events that we had run um, and what we would need to evaluate for that. So that, that kind of um, a circle of ongoing improvement to always trying to be learning from the last thing that we did to improve the next thing that we did. Where are we now? 22. Cool. I am on time. Excellent. So in 2019, November 2019, uh, we found ourselves in a situation where we had increasing amounts of work happening and increased demand for work happening in Scotland but without really the ability to meet that need through staff or volunteer trainers. A lot of our trainers were based in England um, and really it being too far for people to travel. I was then and still am now the only member of programme staff uh, in Scotland, so this was of some immediate concern to myself. We also wanted to develop the community in Scotland. We wanted to also diversify um, the training pool's demographic. We had a little bit of budget to put towards this programme, enough to cover travel and accommodation for a small group and also for a third party trainer who would lead two or three days of training specifically about learning styles, how to design sessions, how to assess training needs and who would also facilitate some practice training. Uh, this was a wonderful guy called Bav Patel. 
who I think maybe it took this picture in the end <laughs> with my phone, uh, which is why he's not in there, but he was in a previous slide. Uh, we've worked with him in various capacities since 2019. I cannot recommend him enough. Um, he's great. He's a really nice guy. Bav worked with us to design a training course that would meet our needs at that point in time and provided us with a really detailed training course based on his long experience of doing trainer for tra training for trainers in lots of different sectors. The focus of this iteration of Train the Trainer was, as it had been before I came on board, focused on training people how to teach or how to train rather than developing wiki skills. And or having any particular set session. We did have really good feedback about this. Uh, one trainer who normally works as a university lecturer said that they learned more at this session than they did at their professional training, which was a wonderful thing to say, um, but uh, maybe also slightly worrying. Um, but we did also get feedback from people at, already at educational institutions who said that they would really have liked to have come on Train the Trainer, but they, they felt that the, the material was such that they already knew how to teach. They didn't need to be taught how to teach. They wanted to learn more about more advanced wiki skills, how to run an event, that kind of thing. Um, and that's interesting. That was good feedback. And then um, we'll return to that later. For the planning of this session, we adopted um, a cohort approach. We wanted the group to bond as a group to help each other and to learn from each other, to develop their networks, to allow for peer learning that happens beyond the course, the duration of the training course itself. We put out a call to our mailing list um, and also to specific individuals within the community who we thought might be interested in upskilling themselves for notes of interest in taking part in the course. As part of the application then, we made it explicit so that we, that we were looking to diversify our training pool. And then followed up with each applicant over email and over the phone to determine whether or not we thought they'd be suitable for the training. Um, in the end, I think only one person wasn't suitable. And actually, in that case, they deselected themselves um, as it wouldn't really when we had a discussion about what the training is going to uh, comprise. They said that really that wasn't what matching what they wanted to get out of volunteering with the charity. Um, before individuals uh, could take place, could take a place on the training, and this is the case with all our iterations of Train the Trainer, um, we have them sign a volunteer agreement, um, which bound them by particular standards of conduct of behaviour, um, and in this instance set an expectation that they would lead a minimum of one or two events for us each year, either being sessions which we, where we would ask for assistance, where we would put a call out for volunteers, or it could also be um, an event that, that they had come up with themselves, that they were leading themselves. And this was around a particular a kind of risk or concern that we had, that there might not be enough opportunities or maybe they would all be, they wouldn't be in the right place uh, within the country um, for people to, um, to lead themselves, for people to, um, to kind of feel that they were getting the most out of volunteering. So we added this option of that, like they can be events that you are running yourself, um, and then hopefully that gives people more practice and feel they can feel more ownership um, over their training. The group included a variety of levels of wiki skill. Um, some people were relative newbies to Wikimedia um, others were really experienced. Some people had assisted me with training in the past and um, some people were from groups or organisations that I'd worked with um, and we wanted to develop where we wanted to develop that group's capacity um, and one or two people were really very new. We wanted everyone to start the course, so we have this wide range of experience, but we wanted everybody to start the course with a minimum baseline of wiki skills and so I put together a programme of weekly emails um, that were delivered for I think six weeks, once a week for six weeks before the course which offered prompts for practicing editing, including areas of wiki which were you know, less common, such as articles for deletion or encouraging folks to write and publish new articles if they hadn't done that for a while. There was also supplementary reading on the Wikimedia movement on open licensing and a basic introduction to Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons. This list was something that I put together based on my own experience of running training for new editors. And I also got input from the various UK Wikimedians in residence. 
I also put together a Google group mailing list for the cohort so that they can get to know each other a little before the in-person section of the course, which we continued to use after the training weekend. And then after the training, I followed up with each of those trainers with the intention that each individual would have the opportunity either to jump right in and start running their own sessions, or if they would prefer to support me or another member of staff or another trainer at a few sessions while they develop the confidence to be able to lead on their own. The idea was then and still is now to invest in volunteers for the long term. And whilst that is admittedly quite heavy in terms of resource, um, I believe that it would be worth it and I still believe that it is worth it. We were just a little part of the way into this follow up when uh, COVID happened. So everything kind of changed. When lockdown in the UK hit, our needs for trainers changed. As a chapter, we experimented with different ways of delivering wiki training online. And after a while, we got it down to a pretty standard formula, which we felt worked or mostly worked. The problem that we had was that it was really only the staff who were able to deliver training online or who had had a lot of experience delivering training online. We toyed with the idea of running training. One of the big discussions at the time was whether online training would still be something that we would be doing once lockdown ended. Indeed, it was very much something that we are still doing uh, now that lockdown has ended. So we had a brainstorming session uh, with our existing training pool um, to determine what their interest was, what they felt their needs were. And again, we worked with BAV to put together um, a training course uh, for existing trainers um, that would, would talk a little bit about training design, a little bit about how to adapt what we know, what we knew and what we know about running uh, training in person to online. Um, and we also did one that was about tips and tricks and event management and how to use tools. And I led that session. We ran this course over three sessions, one on design, one on tools, and then one as an optional opportunity to practice with the other trainers who'd been through the course. And we did this twice. Uh, we did it in two sessions, um, sorry, two, two iterations, uh, to accommodate those people who could, uh, who were available during daytime and those who were only available in the evening. I think that uh, so one of the key points of interest for me with this training is that we managed to reactivate a couple of trainers who we'd not heard from in a while. And that made me think a lot about how we should be investing in volunteer trainer development beyond that initial set of train the trainer sessions. And I think it was at some point relatively soon after this, this kind of top up training. Um, that we created a mailing list that was just for our accredited trainers, all of our accredited trainers, with the idea being that we could inject some of that peer learning and bonding experience that we'd seen with the 2019 cohort into the rest of the training pool. Um, the 2019 cohort had stayed in general and they are still really engaged and really active. Moving on, in 2021, well, in winter of 2021, uh, we were in the UK still in lockdown and having looked at the changing needs of those who were asking us to deliver training and the needs of our community, we took a slightly different approach um, to our standard train the trainer. Um, this is what we said in our call for participants. Um, we put this out in the winter of 2021. In the past, we've offered our main train the trainer program as a three to four day in person training course, and it's often focused on training design and pedagogy. This time, however, we're taking a slightly different approach, uh, which we hope will offer more flexibility to our volunteer trainers and which we have developed in response to feedback from the community and from partner organisations. The aim of this round of training will be to equip volunteer trainers with the skills, experience and resources to deliver a standard introduction to Wikipedia such that would take place uh, at a standard online editathon or wiki workshop. Drawing on the experience of a number of trainers and staff, we've developed a set of training slides and exercises which can be delivered without the requirement for the volunteer trainer to do their own course design. In time and should they so desire, members of this cohort could be supported to deliver training in person and with their own design. 
So here, what we wanted to do, we wanted to do something that was quite simple, or at least that was a little more simple than that three day, three to four day, quite intensive course that was that would have been delivered in person. Again, we couldn't guarantee that we would still be allowed to gather in person, um, but we wanted to still allow people to become trainers, to still keep that pipeline of new people coming through. And for us, this also came hand in hand with a growing understanding and also capacity for supporting volunteers in an ongoing way. At some point in 2021, as I said, we, we developed this new mailing list um, and we floated the idea of doing trainer meetups online to share their experiences. Um, and in response to feedback we got from our annual community leaders survey, we'd also run a series of Wikidata training workshops, which were open to both GLAM partners and to our community. For this iteration, uh, we again did a decent amount of uh, pre-course information, um, although I don't think it was as effective as it could have been because we were sending those emails over the holiday period. So while some of the cohort had a lot of time uh, away from work and were able to engage with that material, uh, those who were doing it more as part of their work, some people just wanted to disconnect completely over the holiday period. Um, and we've got to have respect for that. The course itself consisted of a short briefing session and then attendance at a public editathon that we ran uh, that they would attend as a participant observer. So we briefed them that this is what's going to happen. We got to know everybody and then we ran this uh, editathon, I think, on like a Thursday evening. Um, oh, no, sorry, a Saturday during the day. And we invited members of the public. Uh, as well as all of our training cohorts. And the idea being you are attending this editathon, but also experiencing it as a participant observer to experience it and to analyze it critically. Why does this section come after this section? What's useful? What kind, what are the, the common queries that come up? Having a look at that infrastructure around it. Um, there, then on the Sunday after that, uh, we did a debrief of that section. Um, so uh, talking in groups um, and annotating copies of the slides to say, OK, what worked, what didn't, what could be improved? And um, this was a lot of work in this iteration for myself. I will not lie. Um, and whilst the in-person sessions had required a bit of work in advance and quite a lot of admin and logistics, there was a, still a lot of digital logistics that I had to do. And a lot of work went into organising the editathon. Now, as the lead trainer for the editathon, uh, it was quite stressful <laughs> in just in terms of uh, I was being watched by all of our potential new trainers, uh, plus our training lead bab, um, and that that's a little bit stressful as you're being as you're being watched and analysed. Um, it also, I did say, because of the kind of completely online nature of this, um, it was a little bit more difficult to follow up. Um, in paper, it shouldn't have been. Um, but there was something about not having had that in-person contact with people that made that follow up just a little bit more challenging. It also felt, again, because I think just of the purely online nature, a little bit easier for people to drop out of the programme. Um, so that level of engagement, um, I felt was just a little more difficult to quantify. OK, last one. Um, and then we shall be moving on. Last one. Um, by the winter of 2022, we were again able to meet in person. Goodness. Um, but we didn't have a geographical focus. So it wasn't like 2019 when we were just looking for trainers uh, from Scotland. Uh, from this, we were looking at trainers all over the UK. And we also wanted to deliver some training um, for our existing trainers. So um uh, we decided to go with a hybrid event uh, which meant that we could invite some people in person and host some online and still be able to be within budget hybrid events are not easy um, bav who uh, we consulted on this workshop but who didn't run it and um, said that hybrid meetings are three meetings there is the one that happens in the room there is the one that happens online and then there is the one that happens where those two things meet um, it is it is a lot of work. It is uh, it's tiring. It's much more tiring, I think, than running a purely in person or a purely online event. It's worth noting. Um, by this time, by December of 2022, we had a new volunteers coordinator in place and she dealt with most of the admin and the logistics for the event. So this was a, a pretty major increase in resource. 
we used Slack in advance of the event and the structure also changed a little. So we did those initial briefings and communications over Slack. And then we invited people to attend that public editathon again online as participant observers. And then the first day of the weekend's training was the debrief of that editathon. Um, and then we had uh, we also included in that um, a session on learning design and learning styles. Ultimately, we were still aiming for people to be able to deliver this one particular thing, this introduction to Wikipedia course. We had a mixture of different wiki skills, and so this time I didn't send out so many emails, but we tailored it and um, to the individual to say, how confident are you on wiki? What sort of stuff would you like us to send you um, and then send that. On the second day of the training, uh, we ran a session on developing partnerships and events. And this was open to, as I said, existing trainers as well as new trainers. And we also had a meal together on the Saturday nights, which was really good for getting to know people. And it was also really lovely to be able to introduce some of those new trainers to some of our existing trainers and community members. I really like this structure. Um, there was something really lovely um, about being able to get that face-to-face -face time with people and also for them to be able to meet some of our existing trainers. Um, however, I was very aware and I still am that it felt a little like we were reducing some of that contact time that we had with trainers. And I felt that we'd maybe lost that part where we were getting them to practice their learning in a closed environment before they were asked to put it into action. Now, again, we had to kind of respond to the cohorts and most people came back and said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy enough to, uh, to go ahead and lead my own sessions um, or maybe they would um, assist somebody else. Uh, but if we hadn't been, if they hadn't been that comfortable, um, then I think maybe some practice editing, again, with a few of the trainers from the same cohort to kind of make that safer space um, would have been really beneficial. OK, so that's a, a whistle stop tour uh, of Wikimedia UK's Train the Trainer for the last few years. Um, uh, that's uh, that's kind of what we've done. We, we are planning a 2023 iteration of the course, which will again look a little bit different. We're kind of tweaking that model as we go to try and make the best from it. Um, I've been working at looking at what we've learned over the past few years how our framework for supporting volunteers has grown and changed. And indeed, I've been working on that and looking in particular at, at mitigating some of those risks. I've also just gotten access to Wikilearn. Um, if anyone here missed Asaf's presentation earlier on Wikilearn, I definitely recommend that you go back and watch that. Um, and I'm also planning, so um, hopefully, hopefully, if I can, uh, I'll, I'll get my head around it and make it work. Um, I'm going to uh, load a certain amount of that pre-course information and um, those things that happen before the, the in-person contact time um, into Wikilearn. And um, so to try a little bit more cohort approach again, uh, to enrich the learning experience and to improve the quality of the learning and also the range of topics that we can cover. Earlier in 2023, so earlier this year, um, we also ran a Train the Trainer in Africa course. Um, so for that last iteration, we had a large number of inquiries um, from Nigeria um, and we weren't able to accommodate them within that session. Um, but we thought we would run something that was specifically for that cohort, which we did um, in partnership with uh, Touchy Precious, whose session I think unfortunately absolutely clashes with this one. So I, I want to go back and go back and watch that. Touchy's great. Um, the course that she ran was much more focused on tools than some of our UK session had been. Um, and I learned a lot from that and I'm hoping to uh, impart some of that knowledge. I'm hoping to incorporate some of that approach into our next iteration. So my main priorities and challenges for the 2023 iteration, the main things that are in my head as I go to design um, this next iteration, are to ensure that the standard of training is still high, even though we have less contact time and it's not as intense as that original 2019 one was. I want to do more extensive pre-course training um, and make sure that we have a really solid uh, program of follow-up support in place. I want to bring back some of those uh, those tips and tricks, so some of those how to use tools or interesting or useful things that it's good to know or good to, good to have set up on your account. Um, and I want to be able to ensure that we're putting a uh, focus on learning styles um, and soft skills, so-called soft skills, um, as well as delivering that, that 
product that's introduction to Wikipedia. So, and also to kind of acknowledge that our products can be more flexible. The standard introduction to Wikipedia is fine, but for example, some of the groups that I've been working with have found it a little bit too long or a little bit too bulky. So we've been able to chop that down into say two 20 minute sections and, and take a much longer approach. So that flexibility and that awareness that that flexibility is possible needs to be built into what we can give to trainers. Okay, so these are some things that I think you should consider. This is a little bit of a checklist. Um, so, do, 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 hang on. Da, da, da. Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, this is a, a little bit of a checklist of uh, things that I think it's important uh, for you to think about when you are planning a course. Just starting points. This is not the totality, but they're just some starting points. So hopefully get you into um, to designing a course, to designing a program that works for your chapter or affiliate. So the first of which is define your audience and define the need. Um, who are you looking to aim sessions at? What is the need for your chapter? What is the need for your community? The, the eventual course that you end up running, the content that you end up running may depend very much on who applies uh, and what skills they are looking to develop, what skills they need to develop. Um, when you put a call for, out for participants, whether you share that on a mailing list, on socials, on your uh, website, or whether you approach people directly who you think would be great trainers, um, remember that you can be selective. You may be that you are looking to increase the diversity of your training pool as we were, and you can put emphasis on, we are looking for people from different demographics. Uh, if you get somebody applying who maybe you're concerned about wouldn't be a good trainer, then allow yourself to have that conversation. In terms of the budget, uh, do you have any budget available? Um, if you don't, if you're a small chapter and you don't have any monetary budget available, it may be that what you are looking at is, is your own resource and your own time and how much of your own time you are able to give to developing this uh, this program. Now, the thing to remember in there, I think, is that your own time is still valuable. Your own time still means something. Um, your own time is, is, is finite. It is not infinite. If you want to put time aside into developing a program, how much time is that? And if that means that you have to drop something else from your program of work, what might that be? The fourth thing is defining your learning objectives and let those dictate your content. And do not forget soft skills um, as well as factual knowledge. Uh, do you want to teach people about active listening? Do you want to teach people about how to hold space uh, within a room? Um, all of these kinds of things, as well as the nuts and bolts of uh, here's how to use the outreach dashboard or do you want to get event coordinator rights on Wiki? You need to find the right trainer. Now, for us, we've we've used external trainers and we've also used uh, people uh, from the staff team, from the volunteer team, uh, sorry, from the staff team. Um, and that might just be the case of looking who's got which skills, what skills are you needing to develop? Do you need to outsource that? Do you have that within your team? Pre-course and post-course support, I'd argue, are very, very important in terms of preparing the ground for your trainers to come into um, and also afterwards that they feel supported, that they still feel confident that they get an opportunity to practice. And the last thing is, is looking at risks and planning how to mitigate them. So how do you get the right candidates? How do you get the right sort of people? Um, does that mean that you will have to amend your marketing plan, that kind of thing? Um, are you going to get attrition? Are you looking for people that are really committed? Do you want to look at having an agreement whereby they say we'll do one or two, however many events per year? Um, how long would you expect them to be a certified trainer for? All of these might come into um, how you design that course. So with that in mind, uh, this is when I stop talking for a little bit um, and we kind of go over to the people in the room. Uh, I hope this works because I can't see you. Uh, so fingers crossed. Um, what I'm going to say now is that, again, if you haven't already got that etherpad open, uh, you can go to this tiny URL um, and you should be able to see. Uh, aha, hello. Hi, folks. Uh, excellent, there's at least some of you there. Uh, you should be able to see this workbook one. Um, and if you open that up, you should then 
see this lovely thing here. Uh, and then yours will be set to view only as far as I am aware. You should then still be able to go to file and make a copy. Um, so you shouldn't be able to edit this one, but please file and make a copy. Um, what we are going to do really, and I'm going to set time aside, I have a little uh, timer and everything set up, is basically this, this six section uh, framework here um, is designed to give you space to put in bullet points the answers to these questions that are highlighted in yellow. So what need do you have? And what benefits are you hoping to derive? Remember, those those can be different things. What resource do you have available to you? And, and into what volunteer framework or community support framework does this course fit? Will this course fit? The answers to that might be not very much. And that's fine because we are wanting to design for your chapter and your affiliate. You also want to look at what risks there are. And again, this will be specific to your context. And the last section is what have you learned from evaluating other activities? What do you know about your community? What do you know about the kind of activities that you've run? And what do you want to evaluate for this project? What are your measures of success going to be? Now, this workbook is in two. We're going to come to the second bit later. Um, but for the first half, we're just we're just going to be looking at this top section here. Let me go back to my slides and cool yeah okay cool so we're going to be filling in this top section this a section answering those assessment questions and please remember i'm going to put like six minutes uh 6 30, yeah i'm going to put six minutes uh on the on the timer here it doesn't have to be everything it doesn't have to be complete this is just a start okay so hopefully you can see that timer Ooh, yes, I can see you can see that time out. Wonderful. Um, so, folks, I'll just shift that over so you can get the tiny URL if you need it. Um, and I'm going to spend six minutes and hopefully you will be able to make some notes um, and get started on answering those questions.
Hi folks, it's going to take about another minute there um, and then I'll go through an example um, and then we'll go back to the second part of that workshop. Just managed to do that classic thing of uh, not unmuting myself. That was quite poor. Uh, I hope that was enough time for folks to get um, a little few things uh, noted down. Uh, I was going to see maybe if people wanted to share, but I don't think um, this will quite allow it in the format that we have. So what I want to show is um, the kind of thing um, that I would have put in if I was, for example, um, defining that 2019 um, session. Um, so for need, I had more trainers in Scotland, um, adding capacity that didn't require me to be running training, uh, trainers available to develop capacity, Scottish community um, to feel valued. Uh, within resource, I had some budgets um, I had partners in Glasgow that I knew I could approach to get a venue for free to um, reduce the demands on our budget. Um, and we had some knowledge within the existing trainer community um, and we had that volunteer role description. Uh, I was a little bit worried about not getting the sign ups. We had some varying levels of wiki skill. Um, I was worried that people maybe wouldn't enjoy it um, and, and I was also a little worried that maybe after the training people wouldn't really want to uh, want to get involved. So things that I did to mitigate that were to, you know, really wanted people to feel valued, um, I, for example, um, and to have that pre-course training um, in place. Uh, so that's a kind of example of, of the sorts of things um, that I would put in there. I did not get a chance to fill in the second one. Uh, what I will show instead uh, before we go on to that second uh, little session um, is filling in the, this other part of this tool. Again, this is just a way to organise your thoughts um, and for it to be specific to your chapter. Um, the second session, this sort of scaffolding and the container. Um, so basically based off the things that you have in this top section, uh, you're going to go now and have a look at the next section, which is what kind of people are you looking for? Um, what skills do they need to learn? And based on that above, based on the above and everything that you've done and the answer to that first question, what actions do you need to take? How can you mitigate those risks um, that you've identified um, that you've identified above? So again, we're going to take uh, maybe six minutes. Uh, this is the kind of thing um, that I have done. The, this example is available um, in the Etherpad. Uh, just as an example of the, the kind of thing that had worked. Uh, I initially did this on a whiteboard so that I could scribble all over the place because uh, I like doing that. Uh, but the, uh, this section is for define the people and the skills. What is the container um, that you want? And then round about that, what actions do you need to take? What is the scaffolding um, that you need um, to be able to make that work? What sort of things do you need um, to think about? Uh, so if I go back to aha, here um, and I'll put that on just looking at the time, uh, I'm going to put five minutes on this timer again. It's a very short space of time, um, but I'm just hoping that you can go away um, with a little bit of something uh, to be able to start on. Um, so I'll start that five minutes.
OK, folks, just one minute left and then I'll just go to the last couple of slides that I've got. Okay, hi, that's us uh, back, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to do the last last couple of slides there. Um, I hope that folks got something uh, from that. I hope that you have at least the start of things. As I said, it's just a very simple tool that will hopefully help you to organise those thoughts against those things that, that can be really useful, that we find really useful um, for planning a trainer trainer. Um, there is, as you'll see in the event in the right in the uh, etherpad um, a link to this workbook too this is not for now this is a potential follow-up this is a thing you want to do when you have completely completed that first section and it is a simple way um, again just to look at your planning areas who needs to do it when those need to go against and um, some people use gantt charts some people use lots and lots of uh, post-it notes and um, for me i found um, that this has been kind of useful just to organize my thinking and to figure out what needs to happen when uh, as i said i like doing things on whiteboards so uh, this is what my one currently looks like uh, this whiteboard is sitting to the right of me in my office in Glasgow. Um, and again, it's just, again, that framework has just been quite useful um, for me to think about all of the things that we need to think about um, for how we make a better train the trainer session. Uh, again, I see we're, we're 24 minutes past. If anybody has any questions um, and would like to uh, ask them of me just now, then please do. Um, otherwise, you can leave things in the uh, etherpad. Um, or send me an email. Uh, I'm always very happy to uh, see people on email uh, or indeed jump on a video chat with anybody if I can be of any assistance. Um, I hope everybody has a lovely Wikimania. But yeah, I'll take any questions just now if anybody has any. Oh, yeah, I can see somebody in the room with their hand up, whether I hope I will be able to hear you. Hi, hope, oh, yeah, microphone's on, good. Um, hi, Belinda here from Wikimedia Australia. Um, we have a number of uh, long time trainers who, um, yeah, I'm trying to engage with. We're actually, um, have just had staff for the last um, uh, nearly so one sorry. year. I'm so sorry, I can't, I can see that somebody's speaking, but I can't hear you. Oh, okay, uh, another microphone maybe? Oh, hey, I can hear you now. Wonderful. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was a long delay. <laughs> long way for the message to go. Um, yeah, we have um, only had staff for the past year and we're trying to re-engage with some of our long-term uh, trainers and we're finding it difficult because they um, are so used to doing things their own way and it's a little difficult to get them to come back together with us and sort of start a group. Do you have any suggestions on how to um, engage trainers or facilitators who um, possibly, um, yeah, just don't want to engage, are, are keen to just keep doing their own thing and delivering their own sessions? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think that slowly is probably the best answer that I can give. Um, we have uh, found, I mean, I've certainly found that we have people who've been on board for a long time uh, and some people are completely happy to just do the things that they've been doing and keep on doing that. Um, and that's great. But it is also really nice to be able to bring them back on board. So we've tried different communication methods. Um, and again, with the caveat that that will be specific to your chapter um, about what those benefits are. And I think making it really clear 
um, to the trainer, like what is the benefit that they get from engaging with the chapter? What is the added value that they get from engaging with you? Um, where you have new people and you're, you're kind of you're, you're um, uh, stewarding them through that process, that is a lot more clear. Um, because you're able to offer training, you're able to offer support, all this kind of thing. Um, but I think, yeah, having having a look at, you know, what what is that benefit? What's the ask? What are you asking of them? And what can you offer in return? How what is the value of that relationship? Um, how can you how can you add value or provide support to them and make that clear? Um, but I do also think that that slowly um, and uh, within people's comfort levels is really, really important. And OK, folks, uh, thank you so much. Um, it's been nice to uh, virtually beam to Singapore. Uh, it is now just about half past nine in Glasgow, so uh, I'm going to go and have some breakfast. Uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your Wikimania. Um, thank you so much. And um, yeah, have a lovely time. Bye.